Hi, I'm John Anderson, North American Product Specialist for the 3D Disto. Now I'd like to take a minute to walk through how the interface between you and the 3D Disto operates with the handheld controller. There's three buttons on the left hand side that are your primary input devices. The top left corner is the file button, the file manager button. We've got applications, file manager, calculator, device, settings, and lastly power off. In the applications button, we can then view our various softwares. In the file manager, we can work with our files after we've created them. Calculator is a calculator for handy reference. In device, that allows us to connect or disconnect the 3D Disto to our control unit, modify the tilt sensor set settings, work on the calibration, enter software activation codes, change the display, typical things like that. Settings allows us to change the snap radius, adjust units, change the welcome text at the beginning when you first turn the unit on, adjust the time and date, adjust your language, or reset to default at the very beginning. Lastly, we have power off. So the top left corner gives us access to all the different software applications inside the unit. In order to close the menus out on the screen, we're going to use this little house button up in the top right corner. The house button in the top right corner is like an escape key or a back key or a close key. And there are various options when you push on it. But in this case right now, we want to close the applications and the drop down menus that have popped up. So I'm going to tap the house button to close it. The disk button in the center left is like an enter key that triggers a measurement with the 3D disto. Last but not least, in the bottom left corner, it kind of looks like a bullseye button. You're going to see the targeting screen. Now right now we're looking up at the ceiling. So let's turn our 3D disk on. I'm just going to turn it manually for a minute. We're going to change the view and we'll hit the back wall. So you can see on screen what we're looking at. Now the 3D Disto has a 5 megapixel camera in it, which is what we're viewing through right now. When we're in our viewfinder screen, we're given a number of different options. First, there's a zoom in or a zoom out button. So if I want to zoom in on what I'm looking at, we can zoom in up to eight times. Right now we're at four time view, which is shown in the bottom center. We can go ahead and zoom back out again. We can adjust the brightness of the display. We can activate or deactivate if we want to see the measured points on screen. Enter our hidden point ruler function. Down in the bottom right, there's a one and a two. There's always two levels of buttons active. If we want to capture a digital image of whatever we're looking at through the 3D Disto, we would tap on the camera. And if we wanted to rotate the 3D Disto through 90 degrees, 120, 180 degrees, or any other increments, we would tap on that symbol. So let's go back to screen one. Now we need to move the 3D Disto and drive it around. There's a number of different ways that we can do that. First way we can do it is if we take our stylus, we tap on the center and we hold down for approximately a second and a half to two seconds, we get a big red dot. As we drag our stylus on the screen, slow at first, the 3D Disto robotically with its servo motors will start turning right, left, up or down, depending upon the direction that you drag your stylus. The further we drag our stylus on screen, the bigger the arrow gets and the faster the 3D Disto turns. So let's drive it back again to the left. Now there's going to be times when you're going to watch the screen when you're doing this and there's going to be other times when you're going to watch that red dot as it drives across the wall. Once we start to get close to a targeted item, we'll see there's a sprinkler head up, up here in the ceiling. I can also simply tap on the screen and the unit will move to that position. So I've got it very close to that sprinkler head. So let's zoom in for a minute. Now my sprinkler head is shown on screen and I can also look up and see the red dot on the ceiling. I can tap on the sprinkler head and move exactly to that position. If I want to fine tune it, I can also use the white arrow keys on the top, right, left, and bottom. Now those move the 3D Disto very, very small increments. 
Secondarily, those white keys, if we hold them down, the white arrows, will also drive the unit, starting out slow at the beginning and then getting faster and faster as it turns to the right or turns to the left. So there's multi-functions behind those keys as well. So again, let's drive it back to the left. Now the 3D Dista was specifically designed with a number of different ways to move it. Obviously, we can drive it and control it from the screen. However, there's certainly no problem at all with grabbing a hold of the 3D Dista with your hand and turning it on its axis, provided you do not shake the unit if it's on a tripod or on a table. But you can simply turn it, grab it, and move it. So if you want to do a quick 90 degree turn to the right or to the left versus driving the unit with the servo motors, I may just grab the unit and turn it there, look at the red dot on the wall and get close. Then maybe I'll zoom in, tap once to target, zoom in on my exit sign. When I'm ready to take a measurement, I would then hit the red disc button and the first measured shot is captured. You'll see that indicated by point number one on our screen. To go back to our viewfinder, we will push the viewfinder button a second time. We are now ready to capture a second measurement. If we have multiple measurements that we want to capture, we can tap the viewfinder button once more and you'll see that a lock symbol appears on that viewfinder button. Now as we take additional measurements, the viewfinder will simply stay on. It will not default back to the measured value screen. So there's point two. I'll click a new position, point three, take the measured shot to that position, and so on. When I've completed my measurement tasks and capturing those points, I can then turn off the viewfinder by tapping it once more, and you'll see a representation on screen of the three points that we just measured. Once we've captured a couple of measurement values, you'll see, let's tap on the first line segment. Line segment from point one to point two, I have a measured result screen up on the top of the display. It says three feet, five, and seven sixteenths of an inch. Along with that, there's a symbol. That symbol allows us to drop down and view the various types of measurements that were captured from point one to point two, meaning the slope distance between those two measurements was three feet, five, and seven sixteenths. The horizontal change in distance was three feet, five, and one quarter. The change in elevation was four inches and three sixteenths. And that line segment from line one to line two was a 5.1837 degree slope. If I click on the second line segment, we've got a little bit more information. Again, we've got our three six and a quarter, but also note that there are two half circles around that corner, around that intersection of those two lines. So when I open the drop down menu, not only do I have the horizontal distance, the slope distance, and the change in elevation, I now have the angle of those two line segments as they intersect through point two. So the outside angle was 223 degrees, the inside angle was 136 degrees. This is available in every screen that you have when you take a measured shot and have a point active. Your drop down results will give you all the available data about that. You can also select one of these results, we'll say horizontal distance, now that will be the default measured value up in the top of the screen. If I select the first line segment again, it's going to keep that horizontal distance. If I wanted to change that to change in elevation, I could tap that. Now my change in elevation will remain active on the top of the screen. When I have finished a number of line segments, I can also close that box. And you'll see there's an indicated dashed line between point one and point three. I can use the stylus hold on point one, drag the line to point three. And now I've entered a new line segment between those two points. We will see on our drop down menu that the distance between those two points was six feet five and five eighths. You'll also see on the drop down menu, the inside angle was 21 degrees, the outside angle was 338 degrees. So we've gotten all of our measured values out of those points by looking at our drop down menu right on the top. When we're ready to exit, we can hit the house button and we're going to be given a couple of options. We can save the measured value. We can exit the measurement, meaning we don't want to save it, 
or we hit the house by error and we simply just want to close the list. So let's just close the list. On screen two, if we entered a, a point that was not a good point, we want to delete it, uh, move back. There is a trash bucket indicator. We're given the choices. Do we want to clear the point? Do we want to clear the line? Or do we enter this by error and we want to close the list? So let's close, let's delete that last line that we just did. So I'm going to hit clear line. That line segment has now been removed. If I do not want point three in my display at this point, I can again go back to screen two, tap on the garbage can, clear the point. Now screen three is deleted, point three is deleted. That about wraps up basic navigation of the 3D Disto and taking some basic measurements. How do I save a file? In order to save a file, we're going to tap on the house button. We're going to click Save As. We're going to be given a couple of different options. If I have some existing folders, I can select a folder and enter and save that file to that folder. However, on the right hand side, if we want to create a new folder, we would click on the new folder icon. The default file name is a combination of a date code and a point name. Let's clear that out and let's just put test for our folder. We would hit OK. Now we've created a new folder called test. We're going to select that folder. Now the default file name is again a combination of the date code and the point name. We can delete that out, overwrite that, and we'll call this test1. Tap OK. We have now saved this file into our control unit. At a later date, we can export this file off to our jump drive, open the file up in some type of CAD program, and view the results. Once we are finished, we can either exit the measurement or close the list. Let's tap on Exit Measurement. We're now back to our home screen, ready to take some new measurements.